Oh, that's a good idea. Hey everybody! On today's quick tip, we're going to talk about what all the different little symbols on the balls of yarn labels that you buy mean. There are quite a number of them and they all differ a little bit, but then they're also kind of the same. So I thought I would go through a standard set of label symbols on a, <clears throat> excuse me, a regular ball of yarn and just give you an idea of what they mean so that you're not sort of scratching your head the next time you're in the yarn aisle. The first set of symbols I'm going to talk about um, are actually about the care and the maintenance of the kind of yarn that you're buying. So all of these symbols, and sometimes they're all together and sometimes they're lumped in with like other symbol boxes, but these ones specifically are all to do with the care and maintenance of the yarn that you're buying. So for example, this is a ball of acrylic worsted weight yarn, and I'll get to what those symbols look like in a second. But the care and maintenance of acrylic is different than the care and maintenance of cotton or wool or bamboo or nylon or other mixed fiber kind of yarns that you can buy. So these uh, almost are always on a label but they may look a bit different. So to start with, this one, this little basin-like structure, represents a washing machine. So this first symbol means the water and the washing um, that you can do with your finished article made out of this particular fabric. In this case, yes, you can machine wash this fabric um, or this particular yarn, but the uh, water temperature you use shouldn't be any hotter than 104 degrees Fahrenheit or 40 degrees Celsius. So you can always wash it in cold water and I like to wash pretty much everything in cold water myself, but if you're going to wash it in warm water, you can't wash it in anything hotter than 104 degrees Fahrenheit. So that little symbol means washing. The symbol next to the washing machine is a typically a square, and this is the drying instruction. So that kind of makes sense. Washer, dryer, right? So a square represents a dryer. In this case, this means you can put this in a dryer, so you can, you can dry whatever you make out of this acrylic yarn in a dryer, but um, there are separate instructions within the dryer. So the square has a circle in it, and inside the circle is a little dot. And other symbols will have lots of dots or perhaps no dots at all, there'll be an X through it. In this case, the fewer the dots, the cooler the air in the dryer has to be. The more dots, the warmer it can be. So in this case, you can tumble dry um, whatever you make out of this yarn in a dryer, but you have to use the lowest heat setting uh, because it's acrylic and acrylic is technically plastic and you don't want it to melt or uh, become otherwise affected. So you can wash it and you can dry it. The next label is a triangle, and that triangle means bleach. So obviously in this case, there's a big X through it. That means no bleach. So you cannot use bleach in the washing process of anything you make using this particular yarn. Now this is white yarn, and you might think to yourself, well, it's white, I should be able to use bleach or something like it on it, but maybe not. Bleach doesn't always make something white. Sometimes it makes it yellow, and sometimes it changes the fundamental color pigment inside the yarn. So in this case, when you see that triangle, the triangle represents bleach, and in this case, you can't use any bleach whatsoever. The next symbol, or the symbol that follows the bleach, represents dry cleaning. So if you're gonna make a garment and you wanna treat it with the utmost respect and you wanna get it dry cleaned instead of just washing it at home, then this symbol tells you what your options for dry cleaning are. So the circle in this case, sometimes with a letter, sometimes without a letter in it, represents dry cleaning options. This has no X through it. So yes, you can dry clean whatever you make out of this yarn. And the A means you can have it dry cleaned in any dry cleaning solvent. And it might be a surprise to some of you to know that there are different kinds of solvents used in dry cleaning. One of which is petroleum. Um, another one is, I think, ethyl, like an ethyl alcohol. There's different, like, um, and uh, the sorts of fuel that you might put in a lantern, they use that in some dry cleaning as well. Um, so this A means you can use any solvent in the dry cleaning process if you decide to get your article dry cleaned. And the last symbol in the care and maintenance area is obviously an iron. And in this case, there's a big X through it. So it doesn't even want you to iron, not even on the lowest temperature heating. Um, if this did not have an X through it, chances are it would also have 
um, like a temperature gauge, sort of like the washing machine does, it would have a temperature uh, rating here. So a Fahrenheit and a Celsius. But in this case, because it's acrylic, which is plastic, they don't want you to iron it. Now that does not mean that you can't use your iron when you're blocking an article. But I'm gonna do a quick tip on blocking. That's something separate. You never touch an iron to your thing when you're blocking it. But that doesn't necessarily mean you can't hover and use the steam. But that's something for another, <laughs> another topic for another day. But that iron Iron obviously means um, if you're going to use your, you know, like you've got it washed, now you've got it drying, and you want to flatten it out a little bit, you cannot use an iron on this particular yarn. So no ironing. <laughs> and the other set of symbols commonly found on yarn labels represent more the use of the yarn. So this has nothing to do with um, the maintenance or the washing of the actual material. It's to do with the uh, use of it. So this one, a lot of us are very familiar with. This is the actual weight or the size of the yarn. And you hear me say this all the time. I'm using a medium worsted weight size four, or I'm using a chunky weight size six. Um, there's a sort of a scale that most yarn manufacturers, certainly here in uh, North America, sort of all subscribe to. Zero is like the fine, fine, um, thin uh, crochet cotton thread, that really, really fine stuff that you make fancy, fancy doilies and things out of, all the way up to six, which is anything considered super chunky and beyond. So if you're doing like arm knitting and you're using that super thick stuff that's practically a scarf, that all falls into the category of six, alongside the really oddly spun and super chunky stuff, that's a six. Everything in between sort of more neatly falls into these other categories. So for example, a worsted weight yarn, a four ply worsted weight yarn, typically a four, and that means it's a medium weight. And this is the stuff I like especially to use when I'm making granny square afghans. And the last two symbols have everything to do with gauge. So this one is for knitters, there's knitting needles there crossed, and this one is for crocheters. And this basically tells you what your gauge would be if you whipped up a little sample square following these directions. So for example, if you're knitting, it suggests if you're using five or four and a half millimeter knitting needles, you would knit uh, 18 stitches across by 24 rows. And when you're finished that little square, you should have a four by four inch square or 10 by 10 centimeters. Uh, conversely, if you're crocheting, you would crochet using, if you use a 5.5 millimeter hook, and 5.5 is a pretty standard crochet hook size. I think all of us should have one of those because that um, is best for using in a lot of crafts, especially with sort of this, this worsted weight yarn when you get into making clothes. Um, so the 5.5 millimeter hook, if you go 13 single crochets or 13 stitches across, back and forth, and 17 rows high, then that sample square should be approximately four by four inches or 10 by 10 centimeters. So that's the gauge. And the only purpose for the gauge really, it's not so much if you're following a pattern, because frequently if you're looking at a pattern, someone will say, oh, well, here's the gauge for this particular pattern. And different stitches throw off the gauge. That's why they specify single crochet. But this is more to give you an idea of how big it knits or crochets up if you've never used it before. So if you're sort of going down the yarn aisle and and you want to try something new then you can take a look at that gauge counter and it'll give you an idea of maybe how many balls of yarn you might need for the project you're considering um, this is a pretty standard gauge four by four inches at that many stitches by that many rows but for example in a really chunky weight yarn you might have a gauge that says you know five rows by 10 stitches and you're looking at four inches by four inches just because of the size of the yarn. So the gauge is something to kind of consider if you're not quite sure how many balls of yarn you're going to need and you have an idea of how big you tend to stitch um, to begin with. So that for knitters and that one for crocheters. And that is that. That is how you negotiate the different little symbols you find on the labels that you buy your yarn in. And like I said, a lot of them are different, but there's sort of fundamental similarities between them. And I'm also happy to report that a lot of them have been using these kinds of sort of wash and care symbols for a long time. I've come across some really vintage yarn from like the 70s and the 60s, and they have similar shapes on them. So um, these particular 
wear and care sort of symbols have been in play for a long time. So luckily there's a lot of consistency throughout the industry in that. And also with sort of the, the size of the yarn and with your gauge. A lot of yarn um, has a gauge counter, sometimes it doesn't, but at least now you have an idea of what that would probably mean just by feeling it. So there you go. That is how you negotiate the symbols on a ball of yarn, at least the label. That's it for today, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you found this quick tip helpful. And if you have any ideas for quick tips that you'd like more information on, please leave them in the comment boxes down below. You can also always check out our website at www.jadainstitches.com where we have a handy tips and tricks page and we also have a tools page. And on the tools page, we have things like the UK to US stitch translator and also the crochet hook translator, just in case you have a hook that says it's a mill word too and you don't know how big that is in Millimeters. Hopefully that chart I have there will help you out. So check that out too. And having said that, I hope you all have a wonderful week. Make sure you do something crafty and we will see you again really, really soon on the Jaden Stitches Show. Bye everybody! <laughs> now, what am I gonna make with you? Thank you! Next!